Hi, so this is a follow-up on the video that we did uh, called Unexpected Discovery on a Country Road um, in which I showed a number of items that are available in my gypsy cottage uh, and one of the items were, were these painted rocks um, and today I'm going to show you how I do these. Uh, it's, it's a process that involves several um, points of time. Sometimes I, I do it in the morning and then I come back in the afternoon for another hour. Or sometimes I'll, I'll do it one day and come back two days later. But it, it's separate time periods in which this is done. So this is how we're going to try to tape it. Um, this studio is right adjacent to a very busy road, so you're liable to hear some traffic noise. And I'm sorry about that. There's really nothing we can do about that. Um, so the rocks, you, if you're going to be painting rocks, you want to look for ones that are smooth. Um, and uh, hope and hopefully oval or round. I think they make the, the prettiest rocks. Although with with the moon rocks, to me it wasn't as important that they be perfectly uh, round or, or oval. It could be any any kind of shape. But with the star rocks, I try to make them a little more um, uniform. Um, so what I've done, I've just picked a couple of rocks. I'm going to be working on uh, what I've done with these rocks already. Uh, is to pick ones that have a that are smooth um, or or flat on top, so that the cabochons will adhere to the to the rock. Um, and uh, then what I do is I paint them on both sides with the same color. And this is obviously black. This is um, a special paint called uh, Color Shift. It's a folk art paint, uh, and it's. Uh, Blue shift, I believe. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Blue flash, um, color shift paint. It's it's really interesting because it does shift color, uh, and it the bottle looks blue, but the in most cases it comes out purple on the on the rocks. So I paint both sides of the rock, uh, and then I'll resin the bottom part. You know, you figure out which you want on the top and which side you want on the bottom, and then you then I resin the bottom one and I'll do it um, a little bit later in the video I'll show you how I resin the rocks when I when I do the top of them because I read I resin the bottom one day and then I resin the top um, another day so after they're uh, painted and resined then you're ready to start with with your design and um, now I'll show you how I do the design the equipment uh, that I'm using here um, it's called the Big, Big Shot Machine by Sizzix, S-I-Z-Z-I-X, and um, this is a custom die that I had made by Ellison. It has the four stars on it. I knew I'd be mass producing these. That's why I wanted to make it um, as easy as possible to do a, um, a number of them. And usually I work with four or five rocks at a time. So uh, what I've done here is simply uh, stick masking tape here and then that way I, I can put the, the die over them and I'll cut out four stars at a time and I'm not going to be using the stars I'm going to be using the the uh, area around the stars as a stencil um, on the rocks so I'll, I'll just show you how I run this through the machine you create a little sandwich as they say this is just the die and the masking tape Sometimes it works better if you put it on the mag magnetic platform, platform first because it, it's easier to adjust. Uh, and then you put the, the other part of the sandwich down and then you just roll it through the machine. And then you have your for uh, cut out stars, um, which you then affix to the rocks. So to make the star rocks, then you would just peel off the tape and try to center it on the rock. This can be pretty tricky. Sometimes you have to peel it off and tape it back on until you get it centered on the rock.
check the top and the bottom, obviously, so that it's centered. So uh, I have a little bit different technique that I use with the other rocks. With the moon rock, um, I have a, 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 a die, but the die isn't quite what I need. So after I uh, do what I showed you with the die, then I have to extend it a little bit on, the, on each corner of the moon. And then I use these little Q-tips with the pointy edge just to put little polka dots around and um, the little eye. And one of these Atuli pens, uh, I use the blue one to um, put the little mouth on it. This, the, this, is, this is much easier to do than the star rocks. And the heart rock is as well. Um, I don't have a heart shaped stencil, so I just, I mean, I have a stencil, I don't have a die. So I just take the stencil and um, with a pencil and draw the little heart and then um, paint it in. So that's those. Um, so the next step with these star rocks is to paint them and I use this golden um, iridescent silver fine or some of them I make um, actually golden color and that's the golden um, iridescent gold. And I put two coats of these um, on the stars and then uh, I'll show you what I do after that. But right now, I will put the little coats on. Make sure that the tape is stuck really well. And I start in the center. And just do this. I've waited about 15 minutes, and just to make sure the paint is dry, I just go like this. and. Um, see anything on the paper towel so we'll just do the second coat. So moving on to the next step here. Um, next we want to apply the little sparklies um, for the, for the um, both of them actually. I use the Recollections uh, Opaque Sparkle Vintage Blue. It's really embossing powder but I don't emboss it. I just use it as as glitter. It has some refined um, little specks in it that add some elegance to the finished product. Um, these are the tools that I work with basically. Uh, regular Q-tips, Q-tips with little points on them. Um, these are um, toothpicks with little points on them. I think earlier I called it a Q-tip, but it's not. It's a toothpick with a uh, little um, it's got soft, a soft, it's, it's a hard point, but it has like cotton to make it a little softer, and then just regular toothpicks. So, uh, what you want to do, you want to leave the, the tape on for this part. Um, unfortunately, my glue solidified over the, over the winter, and, um, but I think I can still use it. Um, and you just paint this. Oh, well, first you have to set it up. You have to put the this little folded piece of paper that you put it on because you want to collect the, the uh, glitter when it comes off. And I try to avoid the, the, the actual center of it because I'm going to stick a cabochon on there and I want it to adhere. I don't want it to have to adhere to the glitter but to the um, rock or the paint. So paint around the, the um, points of the star. You shake the... And just go like that. Turn it over. And here comes the test to see how well it did. You peel off the tape and then um, Oh, looks pretty good. You tap it a couple times. You hold it over your trash can and blow on it. Um, and then um, you take one of your pointed um, Q-tips and make sure there's no glitter in the middle of it where you're going to stick your cabbage on. I'm, I'm amazed it came out so well, actually, because usually it, it 
it, it bleeds a little bit. Um, and then you take this and you put it here. So when we get, when we, when we start with the next process, we want to probably scratch off some of the uh, glitter. We, we don't want it too, too um, glaring. Uh, so I just go like that and remove some of the glitter. And then we need to correct uh, where the paint bled through. And it's easy with the black because you can use this Artuli acrylic uh, paint pen and um, it matches the black paint and you just sort of trim up the star a little bit. Now the, the purple one is more difficult because it's hard to get an exact match to this color shift paint and I found the easiest way to try to do that is to use another one of these Artuli um, acrylic paint pens and first try to outline the star with that, that because the, the color of that paint will shift from one time you use it till the next, so it's hard to match it. Of course you could always use some other kind of paint beside the shift color, but it's just so pretty. So first I'm just outlining the star with this paint pen, then I'm going to paint over it with that color shift paint again and see how much I can disguise the mistakes. Actually, I should have done this when I uh, first went to use the pen, shake it up and go like that and get it ready to use. Um, this dries very quickly, so you can paint over it pretty quickly. Let's see if this is still wet. Still wet. Yep, it's pretty much hiding it, and I think resining it will also hide it a little bit. The next step is to um, put on the rhinestones. Now these are, actually they're not rhinestones, they're cabochons um, that I've collected over the years. All different colors, and you can shop on eBay, you can, you can Google um, dome uh, cabochons, dome to cabochons. Um, they come in all different colors. For these rocks, uh, I usually use this blue one for the black, and this one's a little more intriguing um, for the purple. Um, this, I believe, is called foiled, foil backed. It adds some a little bit of mystery luster to it, and we're just gonna stick them right there. So you just put a, enough glue in the middle so that it doesn't seep out too much on the sides, but it but it will stick to it um, well. And you just stick these on here. Um, this is a dental tool, tool I got a long time ago. I don't know where I got it. Um, and tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. And you just keep tapping it and, and you hold it. Eventually you can hold it down without it moving. I just hold it down. You I count it 40 or something and, until I think it's dry or secure at least. And if the, if the stone is um, kind of slanted like that, sometimes I stick a, a, a toothpick underneath it to try to raise it up a little, make it more level before I um, stick on the cabochon.
if it's a really uh, slanted <laughs> rock, you can like stick something thick like an eraser, part of an eraser on it to raise it up. And that's it. So we let this dry and then the next step is to resin. Hi, we're back again on another day to do some resining. Um, one thing I wanted to mention the other day was when I was using the stencil on the rocks, um, I was just using a regular paintbrush. And uh, some people suggest that when you work with the stencil, you dab it on like this uh, so it doesn't bleed as much. But I tried that and I actually got um, more bleeding <laughs> trying to do it that way. So the way I showed you is the way I have ended up doing it. It seems to work the best. So here we are. Um, I don't want to actually uh, video the whole, all the whole process because I, I like to wear this respirator, and you won't be able to hear me much if I'm <laughs> if I'm wearing this. I would recommend this, even though this Art Resin Company claims that it's non-toxic. Um, I still like to wear the take other precautions and wear the the uh, respirator. Um, so this is. Uh, the hardener and this is the resin itself and what you do is you mix them together um, I use these measuring little measuring cups you mix them together um, in a larger cup and then you uh, stir it for like three minutes it says the temperature is supposed to be at least 74 degrees I think they said the ideal temperature was 74 and then after I'm done I usually jack it up to 80 um, to help it dry a little faster it's supposed to maintain an even temperature for 24 hours and it, it takes three days to cure. Um, so what I've got here are all these rocks. I do them in, in large groups. These are the two we were working on earlier. I don't know if you can see them. Um, and I, I use wax paper because it's very inexpensive. Um, and for some reason I put them on these silicone mats which is what I initially tried. Um, but that gets to be expensive, so I just put wax paper over it, and I hold down the wax paper corners with these little little rocks, just so they don't fly up and hit the hit the resin. Um, let me see what else did I need to show you to to set up. Uh, oh, I've doubled, I've I've taped all these rocks to the wax paper with double stick tape. That way, when you're working on them, um, they don't move around so much, and it's easier to work with them. So what I'm going to do is, is put on these gloves and I work with one or two fingers um, and just do this. Just just uh, dip my fingers in the resin, in the mixed resin, um, and then just go around. You want to be, it's tricky when you first start because you don't want excess drips of the resin around the size of it. So you kind of have to learn how much resin to, to put on there with your finger. So just go like this. I go around the sides. Um, I try not to get it under the rock because if you do, you're going to have a um, kind of a weird flat spot because the resin takes up the characteristics and the texture of whatever uh, you're doing it on. In fact, that was another problem with the silicone mats because they have a texture and the texture was showing up on the rocks, which I didn't want, I wanted it to, to be smooth. So I go around, um, I try to make sure I get the entire thing covered, especially around the cabochon. Uh, this doesn't make the cabochon lose any of its beauty, which is kind of, it was nice to find out. Um, and then I come back three hours later and do it again put a second coat on here to try to secure, even, even though I've glued the cabbage onto the rock, to try to secure it even more with the resin. I come back and put a second coat on. And sometimes when I come back, I'll see that the resin hasn't really adhered well to some of the surface, so I, be, I make sure that I resin it again to help it adhere to the entire surface. Some people use a heat gun um, after they do the resining to take out bubbles, but I find that I've worked with it so much with my fingers that I've pretty much taken out all the bubbles anyway um, by the time I'm, I'm done with it. 
and uh, I think that was it. So I'm going to get busy mixing all this stuff up, and then we'll come back, and I'll just do these two rocks um, and show you how I do it. So here we are resuming. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Um, I wanted to mention that if you do end up with drips on the side of it that harden um, after it's cured, you can sand them off. You can just sand off uh, the drips and then repaint it and re resin it. That's it.